The stock looks like that. This XPS system tells me exactly where the cut is going to be. Let's have a look. Looks good. I'm going to use the M3 drill bit and I will tap it later on to M4. We like this kind of chips and we know that our drill bit is sharp and the hole is clean. Okay, so we are all the way through and the hole is very nice. I'm using cobalt 5% drill bits, so hopefully they can last for a number of iron bars. When you are working with metal, uh, lubrication is the key and obviously sharp tools, sharp bits. So drilling with the cobalt drill bits is a pleasure. There's no struggle, even though it's a thick stock, 10 millimeter, there's no struggle whatsoever. Lubrication, lubrication on the bit. Started very slowly. When you feel you are in, I like to add more lubrication because there is never enough lubrication. And one, two, three. Okay, it's going very well. Hopefully the bit can hold its sharpness throughout the whole batch and I have many more to go. Okay, now I'm going to use the same setting to drill the aluminum wall. And now doing the final touches on the iron bars. Okay, very nice. Here is the 15 millimeter stainless steel drill guide insert that goes into 15 millimeter hole. This will allow me for precise drilling of the round aluminum stock and these stainless steel handles will allow me clamping the material for milling, for cutting, drilling and so on. These two holes are offset from the center. Here is the center so that the material will be held from under different angles. Okay, now I'm going to set up my jig, which I made from solid aluminum cube. This jig is specifically designed to handle my 22.3 mm stock, round stock. So this allows me cutting, drilling uh, perpendicular holes as well as vertical holes. So first I'm going to align 
the 22 mm drill bit with the jig so I can move the fence so now I will verify I can use the 5mm drill bit so now I can put the cylinder with magnets into my jig and I can clamp it so that I can fit this knob and this will allow me rotating the magnets in the cylinder okay so now i will tap it to m6 using the spiral threading bit it's a half blind hole so i can feel it's reaching the end of it i'm using spiral cut cutters because it's expunging the waste upwards so spiral bits are suitable suitable for plastics and soft metals okay let's test it okay it's working well so now I can unclamp the cylinder from my jig and that's how it looks like so this thing will be inside the ion and I will be rotating it you can see, you can feel it it snaps nicely in place this way with the aluminum walls and then I can rotate it, you can see it's snapping Okay. okay, now I'm going to cut the tops. I like to lubricate the carbide teeth. It really makes a huge difference. You can try it. Safety. So let's examine the cut quality. You can see there is no tear out. The edge is perfectly clean. It's finally the time when we want to drill the most important holes in the side walls of the switchable magnet. These holes are massive. It's a one inch diameter hole and it will be going as deep as the rotating cylinder okay that looks like a perfectly centered hole so i guess this is the setting that i need so now I'm going to use the same mock-up and change the drill bit to the one inch diameter. This is a cobalt 5% drill bit, which is hopefully going to go through aluminum like a hot knife through the butter. Do the test hole in our mock-up piece. Safety and let's go.
All right. So let's have a look at our mock-up. So you can see the hole looks pretty nice to the to the eye. And now we are entering our piece, our cylinder, which will be rotating inside. And it looks good. Okay, so here is the aluminum side walls with the iron core. So now it is the moment of truth and we will be drilling through these aluminum walls. Okay, so here are the, the aluminum walls. This will be the iron core. So I cut the mock-up from wood that will allow me drilling the aluminum walls while maintaining the spacing between them. Here is the wooden mock-up as you can see it's matching and it's matching this way as well and the height so since the hole was successful here we should be successful this way now you can see why it's good to have aluminum table because when you are drilling in metal and you use a lot of oils and lubrication if this was a plywood or MDF obviously this table will be <laughs> unusable it doesn't seem like it has any problem with drilling aluminum Okay, let's have a quick look. Yep, it looks good. Let's make the test. Okay, that's perfect. So there she is. You can see the hole is quite good looking. So now you can see inside. You can see the profile, the tip of the drill bit. Here is the aluminum cylinder. It goes in this way and it can rotate. So, success! Okay, so now that I drilled these holes in the aluminum side walls and it will close this way then we will drill the hole here and we will be able to rotate this magnet So, I am very happy with how it turned out Let's lubricate the blade as usual. Okay, the cut quality is as usual. Very, very good. Anti degree test. There is a stainless steel threaded insert, M6 inner diameter that will allow me to clamp the piece and prevent it from moving.
Okay, so the piece is clamped. Okay, that's really perfect. Just about 0 0.2 mm below and this should be enough to engage in the in the ion bar. Okay. Okay. So the final step to build our switchable magnets is to attach wings. I call them wings. It's a piece of aluminum, 30 millimeters by 83. So I will drill the holes here that match the extrusion slot because this is a 60 by 30 ex aluminum extrusion we drill the holes centrally they will perfectly fit into the slot which is on the level of 15 millimeters So now I'm going to thread these holes because the waste is being expunged. Now is the moment that I was waiting for. We are ready to do the final assembly. <laughs> 